Good morning, class. Good morning, Good morning, Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and this is Faith School. And Faith School is the place where uh, my spirit gets fed, my faith grows stronger, and I learn how to be an overcomer. Uh, faith is something that you learn, something that grows, and something that pleases God and enables us to be overcomers. It's, uh, you don't just come into the world, you're not just born again knowing everything. Our mind needs to be renewed, and we're born spiritual babies. And as babies, the scripture said, desire the new, uh, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. And so this is about us getting fed, learning how to use our faith, develop, and grow up. God intends that great things happen in our life. And they'll be received by faith, even though some big challenges can come up. He, in, he intends that we overcome every challenge, and that'll be by faith. So let's release faith, faith, for faith right now. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, we, uh, all of us, agree together as touching this, asking you for the anointing, for grace, for direction, for strength. Everybody that should join us in the faith school, cause them to find out about it and, and draw them uh, here and uh, open their eyes and ears and all of us, eyes and ears, to see, hear, know, understand, receive. And we purpose to put it into practice and to walk out what you show us, walk in the light thereof. And as surely as we do, great things will happen because you always are faithful to watch over your word and perform it in the lives of those that do it. We say all the glory to you for every good thing that will happen in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Turn with me in the great textbook to Hebrews chapter 10, and let's continue talking about by faith. Hebrews 10, 38. 10, 38 says, Now the just shall live... By faith. Why don't you just go ahead and say that out loud, class. I live, I live by, faith. by faith. Every day. Every, day, every, night, every night. It's how I function. It's how I, function. I, live I live by faith. By faith. He said, but if any man draw back, my soul I have no pleasure in him. But we're not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. Good things happen when you believe. When you don't pull back, lay down, give up, quit, but you stand up, stretch out, reach out, lay hold, you see the saving, the salvation of soul and not only soul, the entire being. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I just like reading that verse. How about you? I just enjoy hearing it over and over. Uh, we said it could be translated uh, accurately that faith is the confidence of things expected. And faith is the conviction or proof of things not seen. And you will see, watch for those uh, two phrases in the rest of the chapter. In every example that he gives, Sometimes he brings up the very same words again, describing what they did. They were confident of what they expected. They were convinced of things they didn't see or that their senses couldn't confirm. And by it, by faith, the elders obtained a good report. God commends his people's faith, even praises our faith when we walk before him. It, it pleases him so much. One of the reasons it pleases him is because it opens the door for him to do what he wants to do in our life. Every father wants to see their children do well, wants to see their children with their needs met, wants to see them successful. And faith uh, opens the door for God to do things in our life that causes that to come to pass. He goes on to begin to give specific examples of people who walked in faith that in God's estimation is worthy of 
examples to every generation to come. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice. Verse 5, by faith, Enoch, he walked with God and was translated. By faith, Noah, warned of God of things not seen as yet. See, that's the same language as verse 1. He was moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. And verse 8, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Abraham, when he was called. You know, you don't need to move until you hear from him. When did he pack up and leave? When? <laughs> Every word of, in, in the scripture is significant. When he was called uh, he, to go to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, he obeyed. Um, it, it goes on to say, he, he went out not knowing where he was going, and by faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him, f uh, of the same promise. The Lord told him to leave his people, leave his kinfolks, leave his country, and go to a place where I will show you. And here it says that he was called to go to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. Time tries trust. Uh, a lot of people uh, get excited about the things of God and say they're going to believe this, they're going to do this, but you often see that excitement wane after a month. Hmm? And especially after a year, if they don't see it all transpire. But we must understand, through faith and patience, you inherit the promises. Through faith, and that word could also be translated perseverance. Patience in the Bible is not just a passive waiting. And it's certainly not passively waiting to see if anything's going to happen. That's not faith at all. And it's not Bible patience. Faith and patience is being uh, convinced. It's being fully persuaded. It's expecting. And it is continuing to do that at that same level or increasing day after day, week after week, month after month, even year after year, and when you are more excited about what you're believing for three years later than you were when you started believing for it, you're going to see some miracles. You're going to see some amazing things. And the things that God has for us, the big things, they require preparation and transition. They require development. And that takes time. And uh, our flesh never wants to hear that. Hmm? <laughs> when you, when do you does your flesh want things? Yeah. When? When? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even have to prompt you. you <laughs> <laughs> Everything. Your flesh wants it now, 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 now. And the, actually, the, the pulse of the flesh is, get it now, anyhow. What do I mean by that? Anyhow means any way you can. And anyhow means in spite of what might be right, <laughs> get it now, anyhow. But faith says, and faith, patience says, I should say, if you wait, it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> Don't just grab what's in front of you now when it doesn't satisfy your spirit. Because what God has for you, oh hallelujah, what, what he's able to do is not almost, it is exceeding, abundantly, above all you've asked or thought. Uh, faith 
is unwilling to settle for man's best. Faith will hold out for God's work. His work's always best. <laughs> huh? And that, but again, that requires faith and patience. And the Lord told Ab- Abram, he called him to leave home and go to a place which he should after receive for an inheritance. So this is not going to happen overnight. It didn't. It was decades, decades in coming to pass. And some of it happened past his lifetime. A lot of it did. Um, And he obeyed, went out not knowing where he was going, where he went. By faith, somebody say, by faith, by By faith. faith. We know by faith he obeyed, but by faith he sojourned. Now what does that mean? To sojourn is to live somewhere temporarily. (laughs) To live somewhere temporarily. He sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country dwelling in tabernacles. Now the word for tabernacles can be tent. Well, if you're living in a temporary structure, You're living somewhere temporarily. This is not a fixed thing. And so Abraham and Lot and those that were with him, they lived in tents. And they were were ready whenever the Lord told them to strike camp and relocate. And this went on for years. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him, of the same promise. For he looked for a city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He was looking for something (laughs) that he didn't find in two years, five years, 10 years, 20. But he kept looking. And he kept moving around, looking. Jesus said, ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek. Help me out. And you shall find. What if you don't seek? Now think think about how much of a faith statement this is. You're not going to seek for something you don't believe is there. Right? The very fact you're looking for it means you are convinced. It's there, and you're convinced you can find it. Amen. Elsewise, you'd, you either wouldn't start looking, or you'd quit looking. You'd get to the point where you think, I, either it's not out here, or I'm not sure I can ever find it. And we see, verse 6 had said in Hebrews 11, without faith it's impossible to please God. For he that comes to God must what? He must believe that he is. So you believe he's there. That's why you talk to him. That's why you seek him. And you must believe he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. You you must believe he's there. And you must believe you can find him. And you must believe he'll respond to you. And come on, can you see this? Why are millions of people not praying today across the world. They don't believe he's there. No faith at all. And some people prayed and quit praying because they don't believe, maybe they believe he exists, but they don't believe that he cares about them enough to respond or that he'll help them to, to get the right answer that they really desire and need. We believe both. He is. He's there. And he's good. You reach out, he'll reach back. You draw near to him, he'll draw near to you. Is that right? You ask, it'll be given to you. You seek, you'll find. You knock, it'll be open to you. How many believe the words of Jesus, class? Yes. Yes. 
Yes. Well, see, that's what Abraham's doing. God told him, leave home, leave the country, go to a place I will show you. So he did. But he didn't get to that place the first month or the first year or the first decade. And yet, what did he do? Kept looking. Right? He, he kept going. You know, if God's really your God, if Jesus is really your Lord, that means he's running your life, not you, not somebody else. And we should no matter if the Lord gives us a permanent structure or not, in our hearts, we should always live in a tent. You know what I mean by that? And never get tied to stuff. Never get tied to a geographic location. Never get tied. You know, people, sometimes people are so nostalgic. They are so, well, you know, I, I raised my babies here and and, 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 and mama, you know, uh, rocked me on her knee right over there on that, in that porch, on that, on that rocking chair. I could never leave here. Honey, you're about to leave in just a few minutes. You, you're about to die and leave this whole planet. What, what are you thinking? Everything down here, everything down here is for a brief season. Everything. Your childhood, your school. Your, your family, your profession, everything down here is just a small, small season. And on, the only way to get it right and not waste large portions of your life is to hear from Him and do what He says. Go where He says go. Stay where He says stay. Join up with those He says join up with. Do what He says do. And th there, there is no just specific geographic place that that's the only place you're blessed. It's not a geographic place. It's not an economic place. It's not a familiar place. It is the will of God. <laughs> that's the place Amen. where you're graced, where you're blessed. And uh, that, that uh, involves transition. You you don't stay where you start with God. I know Phyllis and I, the Lord has, uh, you know, he dealt with us, reminds me of, of us. He, he said, leave your family, leave your area. My family went back generations on the land. My, my great, great grandfather cleared virgin timber off of part of the, the land there that was to be mine, that I was to inherit uh, after my folks had passed. And so it was a big deal, you know, to leave home and leave family and leave connections. But the Lord said, leave. Oh, I'm so glad we obeyed him. <laughs> because I, I wouldn't be talking to you right now, right? I'd have never found the ministry. And, and so Phyllis and I obeyed and went out. And then we, we thought we'd be in school, in Bible school for a year and go home. That was our plan. And when we got through with the year, the Lord dealt with us, no, need to finish, do another year. And so well, we thought, okay, we'll stay two. Well, two turned into three and five and 10 and 20. You've got to, in your heart, live in a tent. Do you know what I mean by that? At any minute, you can strike that tent. You can pack. Is that right? Amen. Don't take you long to get ready to go. If God says, I want you to go, yeah. you can strike, pack, yeah. let's move. Yes. Do you remember when God brought his people out from Egyptian bondage and how he would lead them? There was a pillar of fire. Remember that? Yes. Pillar of, uh, there was a glory cloud. And then at nighttime, you could see the fire. And so uh, they knew when the cloud moved. <laughs> what happens? <laughs> yeah, but I just got me a good spot here on my, around my tent. And I just got it all stretched out. Just tighten my ropes this morning. Well, untighten them. <laughs> right? <laughs> Why? It's, it's time to move. It's time to move. And you'll find you'll have to overcome your flesh. 
the flesh can be contrary. Because hmm? <laughs> it, it didn't get born again. Right? It was your inner man that got born again, not the outer man. And that's why the scripture says, your mind needs, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And you'll find repeatedly, the Lord says, go, and your flesh will say, I want to stay. <laughs> and, 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 you know, the Lord says, stay here for a while, and the flesh will say, I don't want to stay. I want to leave. Contrary, contrary. And you have to get yourself by the ear, right? <laughs> and say, hush, <laughs> you're going to obey God. If he says stay, you're going to stay until and unless he says something different. If he says go, we're going to pack and go. So many times people have missed the plan of God because of relatives, because of a house, because of a job, because of a membership at the golf course or, you know, their bridge club, whatever the case might be. And that is pitiful to miss the plan of God over a few sticks of wood and bricks. Amen. Come on, are y'all with me? Amen. That's not going to last anyway. You're not going to live there forever. <laughs> How many know there's nowhere down here you're going to stay forever? Amen. Everything down here is for a short season. And the place to be is the will of God. Amen. Wherever he says Amen. for that time, for that season. And so Abraham is a perfect example of that. And he left home when God told him to do it, the way God told him to do it. But then for year after year, he kept moving different places, living in tents. But you don't have to be miserable because you haven't found your dream home yet. <laughs> You don't have to be miserable and frustrated because you haven't been able to fulfill your retirement dream or you had not got the membership at the right golf course or the fishing like you want to. No, notice, in uh, Hebrews 11 here, in the Amplified, this really, uh, really brings it out good. Um, when it says that he went out not knowing, the Amplified says that he didn't even trouble his mind as to where he was going. Does that sound good? Didn't even trouble his mind. Uh, he, he didn't labor over what he didn't know. I want you to say that out loud. He didn't labor over what he didn't know. Go with me to uh, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, fourth chapter, because it, it deals with this exactly. It talks about the spirit of faith. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 13 says, we having the same spirit of faith, that's the same as the patriarch, same as Abraham, according as it is written, I believed, therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. We believe and speak and act in faith just like Abel, Enoch, Abraham. Faith hasn't changed. It's the same spirit of faith. And in verse 8 and um, 9, it describes this spirit of faith. He says, we're troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Can you have trouble, but not be stressed out over it? Here's a secret many have not learned. It's wonderful. Troubled, not just a little bit, on every side. <laughs> yet what? People wouldn't be able to tell it by looking at you. Huh? You got peace. You got joy. They said, look at them. They got no troubles at all. And what they don't know, you got trouble on every side. <laughs> We're perplexed. What does perplexed mean? You don't know. 
Perplexed is about, you don't know. What's going on? Perplexed, but what? But not in despair. Do you have to be down because you don't know? Well, I, yeah, but I don't know where I'm going. Sarah could say, Abraham, what do you mean you don't know where you're going? <laughs> How long am I supposed to pack up everything and haul this stuff around? <laughs> well, well, we'll find it, Sarah. We'll, you said that 10 years ago. <laughs> You said that 10 years ago. Well, we're still going to find it. (laughs) We will find it. We'll find it. (laughs) How many many understand that Sarah and all the folks helping them and working with them, and they had hundreds of people helping them or more. They had to go along with the program, right? And not get an attitude about it. When the attitude, the the bad attitude starts coming up, it shows the faith is leaving. You get bitter, you get argumentative, mouthy, it shows you're not doing good in your heart. Your spirit has gotten weak and your faith is fleeting. You're losing it. He said, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. What's the spirit of faith? I don't know it, but I'm not worried about it. (laughs) Right? The Bible said Abraham, he went out and he didn't even trouble his mind. Uh, He said he he did not know or trouble his mind about where he was to go. He had peace, He was happy, didn't even know where he was going. (laughs) If he can do it, I can do it. You can do it. What enabled him to do it? Because he trusted the one who told him, we're going to be all right. Somebody say, Lord, I trust you. you. I'm not even going to trouble my mind about the details because you will take care of me. Hallelujah. Praise God. We'll see you next time in Faith School.